East High School students discuss what they would like to see in their careers and problems they see in the school. We'll let you hear what they have to say on today's Daily Buzz. Today's Business Journal Daily Buzz is brought to you by 717 Credit Union. Throughout February and March, the Business Journal held several roundtable discussions with freshmen through seniors from several high schools in the area. The roundtables were held to gain a perspective on how young adults view the region as part of our Brain Gain program, which focuses on building a culture of entrepreneurship and promoting workforce development. The panels were moderated by Business Journal content manager Jeremy Lydic. All the students were selected by the schools. The video you're about to watch has been slightly edited for time, but the subject matter and spirit of the discussion has not been altered. Today we hear from three East High School students who talk about their dream jobs, plans for college, and say they need more of a challenge when it comes to curriculum. Brain Gain is sponsored by the Mahoning Valley Manufacturers Coalition, the Moransky Companies, and Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC. Let's go right down the pike. Uh, Luther, what are your plans for after high school, what do you want to do? Uh, I was looking to go on it, to the NBA, but I mean, that don't work. I'm going to be an underwater welder. Underwater welder? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, what sort of, are you looking to get in trades in that trade school, college? Uh, college. College? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Knowledge about you? Uh, I want to go to college be an animal scientist. Animal, like a veterinarian or? No, nah, it's, it's uh, where they go around studying animals and actually get to interact with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You should probably have to go to college for that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, Vince? After high school? Yeah. Uh, I got a, uh, right now, I'm working on having a full ride to Ohio State. Okay. So I'm going to go there and uh, my major would be uh, some type of engineering program, most likely mechanical. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, what's what's the full ride in? I'm in a YSP program. YSP? <coughs> what's that? YSP, what was that for? Youngstown. Is it the Young Scholars? Or something? Young Scholars program, yeah, that's what it is. How long have you been involved with that? Three years. Three years? And uh, how, like, what does it take to get a full ride uh, to college through the YSP program? Uh, get all your credits on high school. In the year with a 3.3 GPA, and that's about it. That's about it. Why you okay. 3.3. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, and a certain SAT or ACT score for whatever major you want to get in. Okay. Very cool. Um, is engineering the dream job? Yeah. How long have you had that dream job? Since I was in seventh grade. Oh, yeah? Why is that? <laughs> Well, uh, sixth grade, they put me in a, a STEM program, and I like I like being hands on. So, what the what were some of the things you did in the STEM program that you really enjoyed? I was in a robotics club, and we built a lot. We did a lot of co and programming. We made some games and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. What is it about hands on work that you enjoy over just sitting down reading from a book and having a teacher lecture at you all day? Hands on, be active. Mm -hmm. yep. Do you feel you learn better with hands on? Okay. Uh, prior to the STEM class, the idea of being mechanical engineers, that's something that was ever even considered? No, I started wanting to be a mechanical engineer in seventh grade, but I wanted to be an architectural and, and a technology engineer. Okay. And was that after? Was that before the STEM or after the STEM? Before. Before the STEM. What? What? What was that? Your interest? Mm -hmm. Why the change? I like hands-on. Yeah. Architectural. It's like architectural is not much of a hands-on, but architectural engineers they draw, and they uh they can get in the field if they want to, but most don't. Mm -hmm. I was in that for the money, and uh, uh technology. I don't know why technology. I think because my brother wanted to do technology. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. So what's more important to you now, the money or enjoying what you do? Enjoying what I do. Yeah. But the money going to come with it. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, knowledge, how long have you wanted to be a, an animal scientist? Since I was in seventh grade also. Why is that? Because uh, I was watching this dude named Mike Holston. 
I don't know if you know him, but he goes around uh, trying to save animals' habitats and all, and I just liked what he did, so I want to do the same. Are there any particular animals that you're interested in? Nah, it's just all wildlife. All wildlife. Why is that type of work important to you, more than just bigger picture? Well, I think animals and people basically are the same and should get the same type of treatment, so I like to help with the, uh, animals' habitats. Okay. Do th so with what's going on uh, with climate, the environment, that sort of thing, do those type of things concern you? Yeah. yeah. And do you feel that your work could impact that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, is that something you're thinking you might want to leave the area to do, or? Yeah, I want to go out of state and do that. Do you? Mm -hmm. um, why is that? Why do you, just because uh, of the job, or just you want to leave the area? No, nah, I always wanted to get out of Ohio for some reason, but I just think it's better in a different place than it is here. Why is that? Uh, more animals. More animals? Yeah, here, I guess a limited amount. Mm -hmm. Other places, they actually got basically everything. Okay. Um, and Luther, uh, how did you learn about underwater welding? Because yeah, I'm about to become a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, we, it's this uh, lifeguard academy thing that we've been doing. And I've been swimming for about like a good three months now. So I just I just felt like if I don't make it in the NBA or nowhere like that, I just feel like doing the underwater welding. Okay. So, so what are you doing to pursue? We'll, we'll focus on the dream job first, playing in the NBA. What are you doing to pursue that? Uh, making sure my grade's good, you know what I'm saying? Um, being dedicated every day to um, practice and trying to like stay focused and don't let nothing else in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you have a pretty decent shot at making it to the NBA? Yeah, I, I do because I got like two years left, so like it's a lot of work to be done, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I really do think I got a good shot at it. Okay. Do you have any interest in playing college ball first, then go to the NBA, or just go right to the NBA? Now I'm gonna play like get some experience from college and then probably getting go about like a year after, probably a year or two. Okay. So your fallback plan is underwater welding. Um, what are you doing right now to maybe pursue that a little bit? Um I'd say like keeping up keeping up with school work, you know what I'm saying? Um right after school I go to the like to the YMCA, work out there. You know I'm saying I got people that help me work out. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about other other stuff, new stuff about the world. You know what I'm saying? Learn, learn more. Now, what about the welding aspect? Uh, are you uh, talking to any trade schools, or, or are you researching different training programs? Not uh, trying to get like like we 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 communicating with other programs mm -hmm. to like help help other kids with that. But um, right now we we only got like a couple schools. You know what I'm saying like next Cheney. Year, next year you can go to Shelfin. They got a welding program. Yeah, it is. yeah, I'm gonna go to Shelfin because like they did, they did tell me about that, mm -hmm. um, the Shelfin program because like we visited about like a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and what we did, they was talking to everybody like which I want to do, so I told them underwater welding, and like stuff like that, so they started helping me out with that. Okay. After you graduate from there, they give you a welding license. Right. Yeah. Once I get my license and stuff, then I'm gonna start like, I don't know. I mean, when I get my license, I mean like if I'm maybe to like help other kids, want to do what I want to do, I I help them out. Okay. Now, with underwater welding, not a lot of underwater yeah. apparatuses in Ohio that you got to go weld. Uh, where would you go to work? I don't know. It's like, like our like people that tell us like we gonna work multiple places. Like we not gonna work in the same spot. So like we gotta work multiple places. Okay. All right. Um, do you feel that uh, your you feel that that school was preparing you for that transition, that next step? And you're only a sophomore. They is, but like, it's like you got like them certain like certain stuff, certain help you like certain help you need. with like I need help with like reading and stuff like that. So I need help with that so I can pursue my dreams and my job that I need to get to. You know what I'm Are you getting the the help that you need for that? Yes, yes, sir. We we, we uh, had a meeting about that about like, a couple weeks ago. You know what I'm so yes, sir. Okay. How about you guys? You feel prepared? You know, you're approaching your last year of high school. Do you feel prepared for your next step, your transition? I feel uh, prepared, but. Uh, like the stuff that's class and stuff like some teachers here will like put on a video and then give us a paper about the video mm -hmm. and i'd rather them like go up talk about the subject because i would learn 
better about the subject that way mm-hmm. instead of just putting on a video. What uh, what were what were some of the subjects like? What's what's the the aspect that the video is on? Like, what's the topic? In math, she put on a video about sleep. About sleep? <laughs> yeah. Now we doing a sleep journal. Oh. No, no math included. No math. How long has that been? How long have you been learning about a sleep journal? We just oh, started that. Uh, well, we started that on Monday. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm a pre-calculus, so I guess it's like we ahead a little bit, but we've been doing sleep for a while, a week. Huh. Have you thought about going to the administration about it, the principal? Not, not, not going to change. Not going to change? Why do you think that is? Because they let uh, teachers pick their own curriculums and stuff and own uh, subjects about what we should do in class. Okay. Um, knowledge, are you also in that class? No, I'm not in his class, but I'm in a, like, I'm in a math that's like right below his. So. Okay. Are you guys getting videos too? No, I'm saying like I'm in the same teacher as his. It's just he's in pre-calc, I'm in algebra too. So. I got you. I got you. But yeah, we still go over that same stuff that he's talking about. Okay. So that sounds like, at least from your perspective, that could be a pretty big obstacle to achieving your goal. Yeah. Um, are there any Are there any other obstacles that are in your way? Some teachers, like I don't understand the way they teach. Mm-hmm. Like, they explain a little and then give us a paper and tell us to work on it without actually, just, like, just explaining in detail. So that uh, hinders our process, basically. Gotcha. The only other obstacle I can think is myself. Yourself? How, yeah, how I go through the school year. And what uh, what is it about yourself that makes you an obstacle? No, I just got to, it's not like I do stuff wrong, but I just got to keep doing right. Mm-hmm. I can't fall off track. So what do you do to adapt to that? How do you keep yourself on track? I just do the work, and then I can't like get caught up in the mix. I just gotta stay to myself. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. But to maintain that full ride, you're gonna have to, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. But you know, how do you stay on track? Uh, well, like me, him, and another one of my friends, all in the same class, so that messes us up because we all talk a lot, but. Sometimes I put my earphones in so I can stay on track, or I try to just block out everyone else. Mm-hmm. What about uh, academically at home? You know, uh, keeping up with your studies, keeping up yeah. with your homework. How do you stay on track? Well, studying a lot helps. Uh, like just keep going over the same stuff will also help. Mm-hmm. This school don't really give homework. You don't have homework? Mm-hmm. Why is that? I don't know. Teacher usually be like something. If you don't get it done in a class, that's your homework. Okay. Not in our classes. I feel like they just don't want to grade it. But I don't, I don't know why they don't give homework, but that's how I feel. But I'd rather have homework than just no homework. You're not going to learn it better. Not a lot. I'm good you know, with the A lot of homework, is. but some. Some. So me and my mom can go over it. Right. You don't try to go over it, but like give you. So give us some, give us some homework. Um, do you feel challenged? No, sir. No? Why not? It's easy. Yeah. Luther, you feel challenged? Only only part of my reading, I can say that's 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 busting me mainly it. Okay. Knowledge? No, I don't feel challenged. No, what would what would challenge you? Harder curriculum. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um have you talked to administration about the curriculum or about upping it up a little bit? Or maybe nah. taking advanced classes? Nah, we all in them, basically advanced classes. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it honors English 3, I'm in pre-calculus. Okay. The government class, that's not an honors class. It's easy. Well, he, I guess he just make it easy. He give us, like I said, he put on a video and tell us to write about it. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, so you're working on a full ride to OSU. Uh, knowledge, tell me a little bit about the idea of financing your education. Because all three of you uh, pretty much said you're looking at college, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right. So college debt is a pretty big deal right now. Yeah. Is that a concern to you? Yeah. That's why I want a football scholarship to, so I don't have to pay for college. So I work real hard on that. Aspect. What if the scholarship doesn't happen? Yeah, uh, they said it's uh, 
my counselor said it's a lot of scholarship uh, things that she can do for me to get some of the money paid off for a couple years. You can sign up and apply for scholarships. You can get a scholarship for anything. You guys looking to get any kind of grants or loans or anything? No, I'm not looking to get a loan. No? Uh -uh. Is that scary? The yep. idea of paying loans? Yep. Even though especially my since mom's still paying some off. I bet. I'm still paying some off. <laughs> uh, so, other than scholarships, uh, what are some other ways that you guys are thinking about financing your education? Luther, you got a couple years to think about it yet. Um, I don't know, like, try to at least, at least get, like, some help where, like, I don't, like, feel like I'm by myself. Or, like, and then we're going from here and then, like, that doesn't, like, make sure I get help. Okay. Counselor told me not too long ago, if you get a, uh, your diploma from any school in Youngstown, you get two years at Eastern Gateway for free. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's education. You at least maybe get some general stuff taken care of. Yeah. Have you thought about doing something like that? Maybe starting off at EGCC and then... <laughs> no. Uh, why not? Because I think I'd get a, a scholarship for football. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about you? Same. I think I'd get one for basketball. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so, you're looking to go to YSU. Would you commute? What do you mean by that? Uh, just live at home and go to school, or are you going to stay on campus? No, I wouldn't. I'd like to stay on campus, but I would stay at home if I had to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd save a little bit of money that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're probably going to be, are, are you thinking of leaving the area for college? Or you want to stay in the area? I might leave. Yeah? Um, what do you, how are you thinking about financing, like room and board and all that? I don't know. Are there uh, do you guys talk to guidance counselors or, or any of the administration here about these things, you know, financing and, and student loans and all that? And nah, scholarships? Not a lot. Do you? Well, I no. used to, but there's not a lot of questions I got now. I, I, I did like freshman and sophomore year. Yeah. So I could get that stuff out the way so I know. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just looking up colleges and looking at my major and seeing what's good for me. Gotcha. How about you now? <laughs> no, I don't talk to my counselor all like that. Or that? None of that. No, we just like, she'll tell me something and then I'll just roll with whatever she says. She don't, we don't really have like meetings to talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, have any interest in talking to her? Or do you feel that you have, an, you have opportunities to talk to her? Yeah, I have opportunities. I just don't take them sometimes. Gotcha. You feel the same way? Are you, are you talking to your guidance counselor at all? No, we only talk like we only talk once. Only had a meeting about the reading problem one time. Mm -hmm. and that was it. I don't, but I don't really talk to her like that. I ain't saying like it's bad or nothing, but I really think we should start talking. But like then again, mm -hmm. I don't know. We just don't talk. Gotcha. Okay. Um. So when you're thinking about after college, or, you know, after whatever it is you do. When you're in your career, what's important to you uh, in a career in the community in which you live? We'll open up the floor. In a career? Yeah. Like how, like where you work and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I don't want it to be somewhere I don't like, because I don't want to, like even if the money good, I don't want to like go to work and not like working. Mm -hmm. What are what are some things that would? Uh, make you like working or some maybe amenities that an employer can offer co-worker co-workers no it's not even like stuff like they can offer and stuff it's like how like co-workers treat each other and they sales like how they carry themselves and stuff and if they bring good energy to uh, work and stuff you can leave with good energy go home happy instead of like regretting right okay how about you knowledge i've tried to find a job that i actually love like forever so that's why i chose animal science Gotcha. Now, what if you get that job and you hate it? <laughs> I don't think I will, cause I like uh, animals since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So. All right. So, where are you going to be uh, looking for a job like this? I mean, are you talking other parts of this country? Are you talking to other countries? No, nah, I think I'm staying in the United States. It's just I like to move to like North Carolina or somewhere down down there. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about you? Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't like, like, like saying something like, 
like what they what they was they was basically saying like yeah I wouldn't work with like good coworkers and stuff like that I don't want no nobody with no bad injury you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying because that's gonna make me go home and have attitude and probably take it out of my family you know what I'm saying I don't want to do that right. I just want to be good be calm we be cool that's how it is with my friends or something like that certain friends like you be cool with them some some of them yeah, just put bad energy on you and get you in trouble stuff like that so stay away from the bad energy you know what I'm saying stay with the good. What about family? It, it sounds like, you know, especially you guys are looking to possibly find work well outside of this area. Does it hurt knowing that you're going to have to maybe leave family behind to pursue your dreams? Yeah, that's going to make me uh, want to do it more. You know what I'm saying? I know my family's struggling, so I got to help them out. Yeah. So whatever, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do it for them. Okay. How about your knowledge? Yeah, that's exactly what he said. Like, I know it's going to hurt, but I'm doing it for them. So in the, in the long run, it'll actually be good. Okay. Vincent? Uh, my family has encouraged me to leave the state, but always come back and visit. So you never forget where you came from. Gotcha. What about coming back to live and work? To live and work down here? <laughs> I don't know. Because, like, like how I was talking about the money and stuff, down here, it's like you won't get paid as much to be a mechanic down here as you would somewhere in a bigger city or in a bigger state, stuff like that. Like, when I get in high, I mean, when I get in college, my second year, I know I looked this up, my second year, I can take, like, internships mm-hmm. and go around, I can go around the globe and stuff. I mean, not the globe, but the uh, country. Sure. Are you doing anything now, like internships or, or job shadow or anything like that? I don't know anybody. Like, there's nobody in my family who's a mechanic, and I don't know any mechanics. No any mechanics. Are there any resources? Like, are there any programs or events here at the school where they bring folks in that are doing the kind of stuff you want to do? No? Uh-uh. No, well, yeah, no. No job fairs, nothing like that? Yeah. Job fairs, they only let the seniors go to the job fairs. Oh, really? So, yeah, that'll be next year. Got you. Okay. How about you know, have you talk to anyone that I can't imagine there's a lot of animal scientists in this area but are you reaching out to people maybe online no my dad got a friend that works with animals and all that but he works inside a zoo but he told me that I could come visit him he had shown me exactly like what to do it's just we haven't talked to him in a while okay um, and are you setting anything up are you, are you he actually up? he actually haven't called back in a while that's why we haven't been able to like reach him so we haven't uh, set nine up yet. Gotcha. Okay. Luther, have you done anything? Like, uh, have you talked to anyone and maybe people at the trade schools about the welding? Yeah, I talked to talk with my coach, you know what I'm saying? He, he helped me out a lot about yeah. me, yeah, about me getting, getting to where I got to get. Okay. And what has your coach uh, told you? What's some of the advice he's given you? Uh, like, it's going to be new things. You might see certain stuff like opportunities, more opportunities come to you. Like, you meet new people, you get, you get to get along with new people, stuff like that. Um, I've kind of exhausted all my questions, so I'm going to open up the floor to you guys. Uh, what's something that I'm not asking that needs to be asked? Like, you're going to have, you know, these stories and these videos are going to be read by all the community leaders and the economic development people. What's something that these decision makers need to know? They need, they need to help, like, help more kids. You know what I'm they got problems. Mm-hmm. Like, they got certain stuff they can't do. Help them out a lot with it. What kind of problems? Like, reading, math. Like, some kids got dyslexia, stuff like that. Help them out. Help them out with their academics? Mm-hmm. Are there enough resources out here to help out with academics? Yeah, but no. Yeah, but no. Yeah. No. No? What do they need, Vincent? You know how like in elementary they used to have like like teacher helpers tutors no well yeah they, you can call it a tutor but no the helpers that help the teacher and stuff the I got the same education yeah yeah so like in high school classes be packed well some classes be packed and one teacher can't go to every student because student more than one student gonna need help at one time so one teacher can't go to every student so in one class like say it's like four students who need help at once. If you got two teachers in there, you can get to those students faster than you can get with one teacher. Okay. 
So how would you address the situation? Like, like, like I'll, I'll challenge you. What, what would you do to help address that situation? I'll go to a board of education meeting and just address it. Have you? Nope. You going to? Nope. Why not? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I think you just said it. Yeah, so you just said it. Uh, um, I'm shy. You're shy? Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone to one of the board meetings just to kind of see how the whole process works? No. I swear I thought that was only for adults. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can go. Uh, anyway, I too. It's open to the public. Yeah, yeah I, went, I, I think I went to one. I think. You gone to one? I think so. Like, where everybody be sitting in one circle or, like, they be, like, got, like, it's like a business meeting mm -hmm. and they talk about stuff they need to do in school. Right. Yeah, I went to one of those. I was with Mr. Bachelor. What'd you think about it? It was cool, but like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think it was for grown people, but like, in the end, I am finna be grown a couple of years, so yeah, I guess I should be there to notice. I mean, it was cool though. Sure. It was cool. Sure. I feel like if I go and address the problem and it don't get fixed, then it's just, it's just, I fail and stuff. And I addressed, I've addressed problems, like, since I was a freshman, I've addressed problems that haven't been fixed. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've addressed it with teachers, administration, parents? Teachers and administration. Yeah. Do you feel they listen? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Um, maybe check out one of those meetings. So what, in your opinion, is something that the community and economic development people, what is it that we need to know that we don't know? Or maybe a question that we're not asking. That all students don't learn the same. Like some students can't learn from just hearing it, they gotta see it. Some students can't learn from seeing it, they gotta do it. Mm -hmm. That all students don't learn the same. Mm -hmm. So they can't teach the same way to every student. Cause that's just setting students up for failure. Yeah. You agree knowledge? Yeah, uh, I agree with it. And then I say another problem is like one of my teachers here, give us work and then, well what not give us work, he'll give us a video for like basically the whole class period then he give us like a couple paragraphs we have to do and it'll have to be finished. If not, it'll be done in a week. It like mess us up because no one would actually think about it if it's due in a week. He should give us actually that day to be finished or something instead of giving us so long of a period. And it just go right back to back every day. So it just keep piling up. So you think so make sure I'm understanding it correctly. You say there's too much time to to complete the paper. Is that where it no, is? No, it's the videos like way too long for us to actually get that stuff done, and then he'll just keep piling stuff on. For, I got you. Yeah. Like all week, he'll play a video and tell us to write a paragraph about it. But the video, because we, we only got 45 minutes in the period, video be like 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Give us five minutes to write a paragraph. Cause some kids don't, can't think that fast. They're not gonna prosper a whole video that fast in their head and write a paragraph about it in yeah. five minutes. Okay. So, in your opinion, how could that be changed? Stop showing videos. Yeah, actually teach it yourself instead Just of open the book looking up. it up on YouTube to teach for you. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And uh, from the employer's perspective, I'm talking to employers out there. What's something that uh, employers need to know? Us, sometimes you can come actually to the school and tell them what it, like, you work about it then. Maybe some people actually fall for that job or something. Would you like to see more employers come to the school? Yeah, yeah. like more speakers, more people to come. Yeah? That'd probably encourage kids, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Encourage me. Like when people come talk, I sit there listen and make sure I'm ready to go. People come and share their stories and stuff. Yeah. When they tell, like, because some people you will never think they came from nothing. And then when they come in here and tell you they really came from nothing, and then you think to yourself, like, if he can come from nothing, then I can come from nothing. I can do it too. You feel like you're coming from nothing? Yeah. I don't even feel like I'm coming from nothing because I grew up, like, I ain't going to say I didn't have my dad in the home. I grew up with a loving mother and a loving father. My dad disappeared for a little bit, but he came back. And it, was, it wasn't a big reason. But I grew up with a loving mom and a loving dad. So I ain't gonna say I came from nothing because I, I grew up with two supporters and all my brothers supported me and my whole family just supported me. So I had like, I had a support system, but like, it's not that I had a lot of uh, money or a lot of clothes, a lot of shoes. I used to get bullied and stuff. So I ain't gonna say I grew up from nothing, but I grew up from a little bit. I grew, came up from a little bit. Gotcha. 
acknowledge when I asked the question, you said, yeah, do you feel like you're coming from nothing? Like, Cam, I, I had a supporter, but, like, we had no money at all. Basically, had to go to school with, like, ripped shoes and stuff sometimes. And, yeah, you'll get talked about a lot or something, so, yeah. And then we get into a fight and stuff. They kick you out for a couple of days and your grades drop. And then it's just, like, you got to work so hard to bring them back up. Yeah, so like when people come talk and tell them about their stories, they actually give you motivation and inspire you to keep Not going. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like there, because of that, you know, where you're coming to school with a pair of ripped shoes or you get into a fight, do you feel like there's an unfair stigma that comes along with that? And it's not unfair. Like, I wouldn't necessarily call it unfair because everybody has, like, if you're in the same school, you got the same advantage as the next person sitting right next to you. Mm -hmm. So you just got to take, you got, I mean, not the same advantage, but the same chance as the person sitting right next to you. So you just got to take advantage of it. Because mm -hmm. I see some people, so some, some people in the school got the, uh, like, the knowledge to be, like, they got the knowledge to not get Fs and Ds and stuff. They got the knowledge to get Bs and up. They just don't try. Why is that? They, sure. Some people in the school feel like all they got is either football or the streets, but that's not the, that's not the case. Yeah, and there's really no motivation in the school either to actually like try and help you to keep going. It's like, if you don't get your work done, then oh well, let's just move on. Really? Yeah. yeah. Kids talk about other schools, like, like there'd be like some, Cheney, um, better than us. You know what I'm saying? They got, they got, they got money, stuff like that. That's what we need. You know what I'm saying? That's what kids be thinking. You know what I'm saying? They need like, they make us bring our own supplies. They, they say Cheney body supplies for them. You know what I'm saying? That's kids is like thinking they ain't getting more than other kids at schools and stuff. So they just like don't care. Like they don't care if they get in a fight. Don't care if they got beef with anybody. Don't care about no teachers. Like after this week, I seen kids sit here and throw crayons at the teacher and I'll be like, y'all tripping, bro, y'all tripping, bro, y'all gotta chill. Like, kids just don't care. Like, if you even try to help them, they still be on that, like, I don't care, like, y'all, y'all can do whatever y'all want, like, y'all not gonna phase me, some stuff kids, like that. Some kids when a teacher try to help them, they don't want the help. Yes, uh, they'll turn the help down instead of, like, getting the help and going and moving with it, they'll turn it down and just act like they don't care. When all in reality, they feel like all they got is either sports or the streets. And like I said, that's not the case. Some people some people can go to colleges, even if it's like a small town college like Easter Gateway. That's still a college and you can go up from that. So what needs to happen then? Because it's so I hear that there are students who don't care. They think all they have is football of the streets. Mm -hmm. But then I also hear teachers are playing videos instead of opening a book and teaching how do we get those those two groups to come together because I mean, could it be the the teachers aren't teaching and that's what's killing the motivation or the kids aren't motivated so the teachers feel like they don't have to teach i say it's a little of both yeah because some down. teachers actually try and help students, but the students will turn it down, and maybe that's why some teachers think that maybe they shouldn't even try no more with the students, but then some teachers just don't even care. Mm -hmm. And some teachers, they should, they should think, I mean, some teachers think they should put all their attention on the students who really don't try instead of the students who want to try. Mm -hmm. So how do we fix that? How do we meet that middle? I don't know, but that's another thing. Yeah, like some kids, some teachers will do that though. Like if the kids will want the kids that do want to learn, they'll go over there with them and like try to help them out. But the kids that don't want to learn, they just tell you like, you don't want to learn, and you can just like get on my class something like that. But no, kids, what I'm saying is, they put all their attention on the people who don't want to learn to try to get them to want to learn, and all they do is sit on their phones and stuff. And then the kids that do want to learn and ask for help and stuff, they say, oh, I'm helping this student. Yeah, like they become like the people that's like on top doing good. They will become the teacher and help other kids. And some, like some kids, they got friends. Like the kids that don't want to learn, they got friends that, that that learn. So you might have to like sit here, talk to the kid that do want to learn, and tell like t tell him talk to his friend. Like try to get his hopes up, or like try to make him want to learn stuff like that. And maybe that, that might help. I really don't know how you could bring that together there. Like, I don't know how, how that could be fixed because you know you never know what's going on at home with a kid. Maybe that's why he's not motivated to do schoolwork or maybe that's why he think all he got is the streets and stuff. But 
Mm-hmm. Don't try to, I, don't, I don't know if they try to figure out. There's stuff that I don't know that I can't like really speak on mm-hmm. that could help because I just don't know. Well, you're noticing it, and that's big enough. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate your time. You've answered all my questions. Thank you. I really yes, enjoyed sir. the conversation. I hope you have, too. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did. Very all right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Brain Game is sponsored by the Mahoning Valley Manufacturers Coalition, the Moransky Companies, and Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC. 717 Credit Union. Business services designed to meet your daily needs. Commercial loans, business deposits, merchant and payroll services. 717 Credit Union. It's knowing you were treated right every time.